Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and I'm back with another episode of the Falling Back to Basics series. If you guys did not see the last episode, we talked about one of my favorite go-to designs, which is L-shape. And I typically use this when I have one horizontal photo and one vertical photo, but I want to show you guys that you can do this type of layout with having two vertical photos and probably two horizontal photos as well. But today two vertical photos is what we're putting on this layout, still in an L-shape. So. We shall see how it turns out. If you guys are interested, I do have a real-time process video of this page, which includes all these extra hand motions, and I blabber a lot more, and you guys can check that out over on my Patreon, which I'll have linked down below if you guys are interested. For this page, I am using my How to Kill a Kit with Style kit for September. Um, I do love this kit. It has been hard for me to work on. I haven't really been in the fall mood yet. Um, scrapbook color wise and photo storytelling wise but I did find these cute photos of my cat where she is trying to eat some leaves and I thought those would be cute to use on a page about fall. So to get started I used this burgundy background paper from Joann's that I picked up and I've matted both of the photos one with a paper from KM Memories and one with a paper from the Outfitters collection and then I also have this specialty gold paper that I've had in my stash for quite some time it's probably the paper studio um, or Joann's I'm not 100% sure um, but I originally thought I was going to banner both of these but you can see these really really emphasize the L shape design in this page and I think using your paper is a wise way to do that I know in the go to designs video I talked a lot about the photos really determining um, the stylization of the layout but your paper can do things just as equally um, impactful so as I stack things together, you'll see it sort of come together. I have a gold doily tucked beneath the other two photos. I like that it's not a square edge in the bottom of this L. And here's where I start breaking out of my kit. Now this happens frequently, especially when I start doing photos that I never thought I'd do with a certain kit. I often reach outside the kit to make it work a little bit better, which as you guys know, I'm a big rule breaker when it comes to anything kit related or challenge related. Um, I just like to go with what works best in my eye versus trying to make things work that I'm not happy with. So I have these jelly bean soup die cuts on my desk that I decided to pull out these windows, this milk can, and a watering can. And then I also pulled out a little cat chipboard piece from my stash. I was like, well, I might as well use something cat related on a cat page. And the things start stacking together and I'm starting to like the way it looks. I knew in any other scenario I would struggle to use these jelly bean soup die cuts, so the fact that I wanted to pull them out for this layout was a great step for me so that I can indeed use them a bit on this page. So those windows I knew I'd have a trouble using, but since they're windows they kind of remind me of home, and since she's on her patio I think it works nicely to get that mood and feel on this page of a hominess of that, you know, country house with the milk jug. Um, and she loves milk, so it's really, really fitting for her story, particularly for that. The red or maroon heart, whatever color you want to call it, um, is from my stash kit at least. I'm very excited to have that put on a page. Um, I've had that for quite some time, and it was sent to me from a pen pal, and I'm really glad to have it as part of a cluster. Now, I definitely struggle here. Um, in the next few steps of this layout, I felt like it needed more. I didn't know what it needed. My kit wasn't giving me anything that could work. I wasn't thinking outside the box enough to figure out a solution yet, so I'm really, really struggling at this point. I look at flair, I looked at resin pieces, I look at stickers in my kit, and this is a fall layout, but the color scheme I went for was very, very unique and therefore hard to match and hard to work with. So I'll start looking for white embellishments, you know, things that will actually coordinate um, because white neutrals are much easier to coordinate than bringing in another color. But then I start looking through my new pile of things that I haven't played with yet that I've had for months and I come across these Paige Evans flower die cuts. Now these are from the Whimsical Collection which I think has been out for quite some time now and I bought these at Tuesday morning so I'm really excited to have these to, at my disposal. So I start looking through these florals and I find one that has these perfect light mauve colors and a baby pink and I think they match perfectly to the color scheme of this layout since they're just lighter versions of the burgundy that I already have and I thought these would work very very well as other layering elements in my clusters. So 
Except for doing my normal smaller clusters, I decided to go big or go home and pull out all these beautiful pink flowers. Then I'm going to start layering with my other cluster pieces. And this just really, really finishes off the page, I will say. Um, it worked out so nicely. And I did end up bringing in another color. There's a light green that I'll start working with that's in the medium-sized floral cluster. I just thought, well, if I'm going to bring in the green, I might as well bring it in full force. And luckily for these die cuts, they have several of the same um, colors so you can you know mix and match as you please so I grabbed some of those additional leaves and put them there and now I'm going to start putting it all together um, this was a really really fun layout to work on I will say I still continue to struggle with specialty color schemes especially when I'm trying to work with a kit and I can manage to find something that doesn't exactly you know res represent the kit fully and I try to go with those color schemes and then I'm left with well nothing else goes with this what do I do next this is what I do next. I break the rules and start diving outside of the box to find things that'll work for this layout. And I do have some uh, issues with spacing on this one as well. Um, I'm not really great at remembering where I put things, especially when it comes to some bigger spacing issues like this one. So I need to make sure the right side was far enough down on the page and that the left side, the photo, was far enough down on the page to fit both the clusters that I needed and so the doily fit nicely and so a title could fit. Um, so there's a lot going on here, but it works out very nicely in the end if you ask me. So as I start gluing everything down, I realize it does tend to look a little bit flat. So what I end up doing is putting some on foam adhesive, especially since we have that chipboard piece in the top left that has dimension, we might as well add some more. So I took out some of my foam squares and put those underneath this watering can for this cluster, and that'll be the one element that has popped up. And then for the other clusters, I decide to pop up the heart, so that burgundy colored heart will be popped up on foam adhesive while the rest will be flat on the background. And then here's where I do bring in those green sprigs. I figured that really helps emphasize the extra color. It helps emphasize the visual triangle. Lots going on there, but I think it really, really, really helps doing this for your clusters. Bringing in that one pop of color or that one design happens to be leaves in this case are also all in the clusters. Flowers are all in the clusters. And then that beautiful gray tone that's in that jelly bean soup die cuts, all in the clusters. Really makes it feel like a cohesive layout without having to do too, too much work. Because sometimes it feels like you have to do a lot of work just to feel that cohesiveness. But in this case, I think it was pretty easy since I was using similar collections. Here's where I start tucking in the other elements. Again, we have some 3D-ness from that chipboard cat. But I wanted to put this flower also on some foam adhesive just to give it another bit of shine. Um, and a boost of height. So it looks like this layout's coming together fairly quickly, but I have yet to figure out what I want to do for a title. There's lots of options. I have a lot of white space up there, so technically I should use it to the best of my advantage. So I take some time to go look for some thickers, um, which did take me a while, and I thought maybe these leaves could go around it, the matching leaves that are left. But I decide that I pull out this font here, which is more of a copper color, um, but it does remind me of fall quite a bit, and gold and copper mixed together don't uh, particularly bother me. I think those two go together very, very well. Um, and these Paige Evans ones, I'm almost positive they're copper, but I couldn't 100% tell, so now the gold's like the second metallic already on layout, and the copper's the more dominant. So I peel out these stickers and decide to go with a cute title, or at least what I think is a cute title, and it says Tastes of Autumn. And that's funny because in the top left picture, she is chewing on leaves. And I just thought that'd be cute for Prosperity Steak. Um, and she really, really loves to chew things. Um, she's the one who would eat a fuzzy off a floor, you know, just like a little tuft of things. She has to go figure out what it is and if she can eat it. Um, that's her personality. So I use these and they're definitely not on straight um, in this instance. But I do go back after the video and use my T-square ruler to kind of straighten those out and to put extra adhesive on the back of them because it does not, they do not stick, which is very disappointing. And lastly, I go to my tiny word sticker stash and go for my themed uh, Tim Holtz book here and pull out some of the October-esque pieces. So I have one that says fall, one that says October, and I think one that says leaves. Very on point for this themed layout and really ties in that fall without having to do too much. 
Lastly, for a final bit of something, I decided to go with some Spiegel Mom Scrap Sequins. Um, the Gumdrop Mix had this perfect dark mauve color that I end up pulling out. And then I also get some very, very light pink ones from the Vintage Dowry Collection from Spiegel Mom Scraps. And those light pinks help bring in those floral pinks that I had mentioned earlier that I would brought in from Paige Evans. And I'm really, really happy that I used some sequins on this layout. Although I originally wanted to use some of these gold uh, shaped leaf sequins that I had, but the leaf shapes didn't match any of the other leaf shapes on this layout. And the gold was no longer relevant since I'm using a copper. But I'm really excited to be using these ones. I think they're such a good match, especially that dark mauve. It matches the background paper perfectly, and I really like how it turns out. Now here are the close-ups of the finished layout. I hope you guys enjoyed this L-shaped design. And if you haven't watched the go-to design video from before this, definitely check it out. I'll have the playlist for the Falling Back to Basics series linked down below. And let me know what you guys are excited for. I know a lot of you are excited for the embellishment clusters, but there's so much more we can cover, and I'd love to hear your ideas. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon with another L-shaped process video for this week. Thanks for watching. Bye!